For this experiment, you will need to record a video of your object falling through the air, and I will now explain how to set up the tracker software so that you can produce a velocity time graph of its motion. So we're going to show you how to use the tracker software to produce the data that we can get a graph from. So the first thing we need to do after we've opened the program is we need to come up to the video and import a video that we're going to look in. Um, my video I think I've got on my desktop. And terminal velocity. Okay, first thing we need to notice here is the video is has been rotated around by 90 degrees. So if I go to the video again and come down to the filters, onto new, I can rotate it and I want to rotate it anti-clockwise. So that will put it to how we want it. <clears throat> right, next thing we're gonna we're gonna do is we're gonna put on some axes so we can work out where the origin is and also you'll notice I tried my best with my um, setting up my mobile phone to get the room as vertical as I could but I'm not quite there if we can look at the door frame but to begin with what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate these axes around by 180 degrees and that way that will tell it that down is now the positive and if I just do that and come so I can grab it wide, I should be able to line it up with that door frame there. And I'm just going to bring this axis up to the top so we, we can do that. Now, my origin, I don't need to see those, so I can click off that. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to calibrate it. So I come along and I want to choose a calibration tape. Now on the wall where I videoed this I've got some markings that one is at 1.8 meters high and this one down here is at 0.8 meters so if I do that I can now come along and I can tell that that, that is one meter now that we we've got it calibrated I don't need to see that so if I come back up here and I can click off the calibration tape okay if I play the video, I did have it so I set it up. I did it on my phone so that the first frame was very close to the beginning. But now I can see I've got all of these frames towards the end. If we come back down here, that I'm not going to be using because the cone is gone. So my end is around about there. So if I grab this little triangle here and pull him down to where I want him to be. Okay, so probably I'm going to use that as my last frame. I can come back to start the video again over here and press play. And that's looking good. So I'll come back to the end. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create a point mass. Now I've got my point mass here. I'm going to try an auto track. So if I click on the auto tracker. And now what I need to do is create what's called the keyframe. So if I just click on here, and if I press Control and Shift, you can see my cursor has changed. And now if I come along and I click on about that little black dot that I produced, I've created a keyframe. may not be perfectly spot on, but well, we'll see what happens. Now if I click on the search, what it will do is it will try and look for that marking in each of the frames and I've got to a frame here where it can't find it so I'm just going to help it out if I press shift I can go it's there and then it will move on okay I can't find it in that frame or that frame so I'm just actually helping it out and doing this manually there are other settings you can play with to make it more sensitive and changing but for the amount of time it takes to actually set those up in comparison to just clicking through the frames it's probably easier just to manually mark them in okay put that one in there right so that's that done so I can click on stop now if I close that off we can see I've got a graph drawn here 
Now initially this is on the X which is going this way and I'm not at all interested in how it's moving on the X. So if I click on there I can see what I want to put on my Y axis and I'm looking for the velocity of the Y component. So if I click that we can see I've got a graph drawn here it's going up, it's speeding up, and then we're probably approaching the terminal velocity. Now, whilst this graph shows me that I've got a reasonably decent data, I want to produce a better graph, and I'm going to do that in Excel. So on the table bit down here, if I click on that, sorry, actually on the table, I'm not interested in the X and Y components. I'm just, I want the velocity of Y and the time. So that will just give me those two. It's a bit large. Okay. Now, it will calculates the velocity from the, um, the distance between two frames, hence there's not a first velocity when the time is zero because it needs two frames to work out the velocity. So if I now just do that, and obviously the last frame also doesn't have a velocity, so I'm just going to copy all of those cells now if I right click, I want to copy the selected cells and I'm happy to have them as formatted. And then if I bring up my spreadsheet, I can just paste those in and get rid of that. Don't need to see that it's mass A. And, and if I right click there, I can cut those and I'm just going to put them in the top corner. and paste them in there. Okay, now they're selected. I'm going to insert a chart. I just want it as a scatter graph, so something like that, that will be fine. And I've got my chart in, and I've got lots of options here, so I can add elements such as axes, titles. I'm going to want a primary, I'm going to want there. I'm going to want the vertical axis there. And I'm going to make my, oh, that's the chart area, I don't want that, I want the axis, I want to format the axis, so right click there, format the axis, and it's got it starting at minus 0.5, I want it to be at zero, so I'll just save that, I can get rid of that, obviously you'll, when you'll come to do this you'll put the correct axis titles in etc. But now, Excel can do lines of best fit for certain functions, but this one it's not going to do so well. So I'm going to come along and I'm going to use the draw tool here. Uh, you'll find it on your computers in the, I believe it's under, I think it's in the review where you can do it, but because I've got a special um, tablet that I'm drawing on, I've got this extra draw tab here. So I'm going to come in. And I'm just going to draw myself, hopefully, a curve of best fit. Not brilliant, but we get the idea. And um, what I can see now is I could come along here and I would be able to read off my terminal velocity. A lot of phones now have the ability to record in slow motion and the track software is able to use these videos as well. Because the slow-mo video has got um, so many more frames per second, we won't see as much of um, the blurring of the object as, as, it, as it falls and it should be able to give you a much cleaner, better looking graph. So here we go, I've set the um, tracker software up uh, exactly the same as with the previous one. So if we now come along and click an auto tracker I'm going to work find give it its um, keyframe so I press control and shift on the target I can see over here that I've got my little spot drawn on it and if we click search you should see that it just really picks it up so much more smoothly as it goes down
Okay, so if we close that off, and again, I mean, this is this graph here is giving the X, so that's showing us like the little wobble it's doing left and right. But um, if we come along here, and if I do that as the Y, you can see, yes, I've got a really, really clear, nice curve. And if we look at the Y components of the velocity, we can see here, it was, we're getting faster, we're getting faster, and then we're approaching the terminal velocity. So again, I can uh, change my table just to grab the data I want and put it into Excel and create a graph that will allow me to read off the terminal velocity there. And here is the graph that I've got in Excel. So what we can see is, yep, yeah, we've got it coming up. I've put my line of best fit in and I should be able to read along. So I'm around about 0.4 uh, meters per second. Um, what you should, should realize here though, of course, is this here is traveling a lot, lot slower than with the other graph because of course it's a slow-mo video and the tracker software is realizing that this is coming through at uh, 30 frames per second and I happen to know that my uh, camera records at um, 300 frames per second so the video is slowed down by 10 times so what I would need to do is of course multiply this speed by uh, 10. <laughs> 